Hey, what? I've got a uh, post uh, up in 602, and I'd like his blood pressure checked every half hour until it makes a good jump. Okay, I'll make a note of it. Oh, yeah, I, I'd rather he didn't have anything by mouth tonight. You indicated that on his chart? Yeah, well, sometimes people don't read carefully, or they right, forget. Right, 602, I'll remember it, Doctor. Bucky, uh, I know I can uh, count on you. Look, one more thing. Have I, have I offended you in some way? I mean, ever since I was reappointed, you've been remarkably distant. <laughs> reappointed? Bucky, uh, it was a complicated business, my coming back on staff. Now, maybe Seneca's told you the circumstances. Yeah, maybe so. Including all the details? Yeah, the whole disgusting story, Roger. So, uh, if you'll excuse me, I'll get back to work. Well, uh, then you know about Edmund and Seneca's problem there. Yeah, I know about Edmund, and Seneca, and you, Doctor. But I try not to think about it while I'm on duty. So if you don't have anything more to say about 602, I'll just say goodnight, okay? Now, wait a minute. I'm not through yet. Look, do you want to talk about patients? No, I want to talk about me and no, Seneca. No, no, that I don't have to listen to. All right, then I'll listen. I want you to fill me in on this, uh, this dreadful inside story you seem to have. You don't want me ripping into you, Roger. You really don't. I want to know Seneca's version of the truth. Obviously, you've bought it. But I have a hunch it's something less than accurate. <laughs> you have such a polite manner. I mean, you really don't sound like a cheap extortionist. I bet you Seneca's mother didn't have a chance with you. I mean, she's used to dealing with creeps running a lumber mill, but I mean, a con artist posing as a doctor, and it talks so well. I am a doctor. And it so happens that Mrs. Bolak enjoyed my company. I guess what I mean to say is, Roger, in my book, you're a fraud first and a surgeon second. You're a blackmailer, man. I know a little bit about your history, and I know everything you've done to Seneca in glowing and accurate detail. And when you found out about Edmund's paternity, you went after Seneca's blood type. You went to his home, to his mother, to his birth certificate, for all I know, and then you came back from Canada with that little hot bit of information, and you tied it around his neck so he could hang or give you what you wanted. Hang? You mean tell Jill the truth. Seneca loves the truth. He can't tolerate anyone who abuses it. The truth above all else, that's his motto, until the truth gets in his way, and then it's a noose around his neck, huh? Look, Seneca's gonna tell Jill he's not the father. She'll get the truth. Oh, sure, when he's good and ready. Oh, I love it. I'm a con artist. And he's a saint? You blackmailed him, man. I used his situation to my advantage. I did not create that situation. And I am not perpetuating it. He knows that Frank Ryan is Edmund's father. But he doesn't tell Jill. He lies to her. Day in and day out to the baby, to Frank. And you can call me immoral? Yes, I do. Look, I did not fight my way back in this hospital for money or prestige. I'm not getting the same reward Seneca is. I'm just trying to keep people alive because it's what I do well, and I enjoy using my skills, and I'm immoral. Seneca spends every spare minute with Jill, lying to her, loving her, deceiving her, and I'm immoral. Look, I don't want to discuss Seneca with you, man. I mean, because you don't compare with him in any way, shape, or form. You wanted me to talk, I've talked to you. And you know how I feel about you. So remember it, because I am not going to discuss it again. Or even change one of your rigid little opinions. <sighs> Look, you're my senior here. And I take orders from you. But otherwise, forget it. <laughs> Talk. You've got about two minutes. Can I come in? No, I can listen to you right here. Go ahead. But what about the kid? Shouldn't you take him in your arms or something? No, 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 no. He'll fall asleep now that it's nice and quiet. You're right. You mm -hmm. Stop. You're a good kid, Edmund. I'd really like to sit down. You mean need to. Sorry, that's your problem. Hey, now, look, this wasn't easy for me to come here. And while I was thinking about it, I did have a couple of drinks, but I am not drunk. 
Now, I have something to say, and I'll be damned if I'm going to stand out here and say it. And if you continue to talk that loud, I'm going to slam this door in your face. In which case, I will talk even louder so you can hear me. Not much. Don't want to fight. Thank you. Okay, you have two minutes to say what you want, and then you leave. Is that clear? Yeah. Oh, I was uh, talking to Mary tonight. Sorry. Um, she waited at the hospital all day for Jack to come and take her home, but Jack never came. So she's with the parents, and Jack is with nobody. Isn't that sad? Uh huh. I start off feeling bad for them. I end up feeling bad for us. We're pretty sad too, you know. Look, that's the way it is. There is no point saying it for the umpteenth time. Particularly at this hour. No, wait, wait, hold it, hold it. This isn't just more of the same old stuff. It's different. A new thought. As much as I hate to face it, I can't get away from it. I was wrong. Yes, you was wrong, I was wrong. Frank, come on. Let's talk about this some other time. You've got to go home and go to sleep. And anyway, aren't you supposed to be at the hospital staying with little John? No, Ma's with him. You see, that's when it was. At the hospital, when you came to visit little John, you said that thing about having a sick child and, and the way parents feel, the way you felt about Edmund. And, and it hit me then that I asked too much and it wasn't fair. Talking about my going to Philadelphia? Yeah, you're going to Philadelphia because of your kid, not because of Seneca, although he set you up and smoke screened me. You went there for Edmund's sake. So I asked myself tonight, would you let a political meeting prevent you from taking little John to an ear specialist? Absolutely not. I'd be sick with worry and, and fear to think about the right day and the Frank, right time. Frank, listen to me. I'm glad that you understand I really am, but yes. don't you see, it doesn't change things for you and me. I hope, I hope that little John is going to be okay. Yeah, me too. Hey, wait. Any no, come on, please. No more. I see, I, I... I'd like to try... Oh! I, I think it's possible. No, it is impossible. It's over. Do you let go? Just like that. Oh, no. No, not, not just like that. Long, slowly, and painfully. And the process is still going on, but I'm going to let go of you, Frank, just the way you're going to let go of me. And I'm only hoping that we can do it with some degree of kindness. I, I wasn't uh, totally honest there. When you came to visit little John, the thing that turned me inside out was you're saying that you love Seneca. Yeah, I said that. I said that I love him as a friend, and why shouldn't I be able to tell you that? Oh, no, no reason. You should be able to tell me that, except that I, I always knew. Uh, you've been in love with him for months. You didn't have any idea, but I saw Frank, it. Frank, I am not in love with Seneca. No. And I am tired of you telling me what I'm feeling. You can't begin to understand my affection for Seneca. What about your affection for me? Did I understand that? I think we'd better say goodnight. N no, wait. I mean, were you in love with me? Or was I just a friend that you loved? I seem to remember that it all went together, but maybe that's just the way I understood it. Look, if you want me to stand here and convince you that I loved you, I'm not going to do it. Now, you may get enjoyment out of that, but I am not playing those kind of games. Oh, no. No game? I'm mixed up, honestly. I just don't understand how we can be together for the rest of our lives one minute and the next minute be a million miles away. I mean, how does such a thing happen? How can we, we want each other and miss each other and still say that it's over? Because it is. It is over, once and for all. I don't believe it's us. It certainly isn't Edmund, and forget Philadelphia. It's Seneca, 
and the way he's using your child and our situation to get what he wants, which is you. He's manipulating you, Jill. And he's terrific at it, I'm telling you. He's in a league with Delia. But I got away from Delia. And you can get away from him. I wanted to leave this to Jill. As long as I'm here, you have so much to say about me. You better say the rest of my face. 